Hello and welcome to this demo video for the rented item manager. Now, what is a rented item manager? I suspect this is probably going to be quite popular amongst uh, possibly the building industry or the trades where they're renting equipment, uh, machinery, that kind of thing. Um, but it can actually be for anybody, any business who is regularly renting items. So you've got stuff that you've rented for a day, a week, a month, whatever it may be. And you need to obviously a remember to return it, but also b just to track how long you've had it for and how much it's cost you compared to what you initially planned to pay for the initial rental period. So, you know, if you're renting one thing every, every blue moon, it's probably not going to be helpful to you. But if you've got a number of things rented at any one or at any one time, this will be quite useful for you. Let me go through and explain how it works. <clears throat> uh, the first page is the settings page all that's on here are categories so categories are it can actually be anything you want the only thing i would suggest not categorizing it at as is where you get the item from because there there is a supply list as well where you can put suppliers in so any other category this can be i don't know if you've got five or six different staff members and they're each renting different things and you want to monitor by which staff's got one item or you can maybe categorize it by um, a type of machinery that the type of machine that it is maybe it's for a different department of your business whatever it may be you've only got 10 options so you've got to you got to pick carefully but whatever however you want to categorize um, each of these rentals you can you can do it in here so you just type in 10 different names uh, of whatever categories you choose now each item can only be categorized to one category so you can't have kind of the first three as staff the second three as as departments that kind of thing you've got to pick one category but then you can list up to 10 categories at four uh that that would that how you want to categorize each of these um items and each uh item rented you can so you can assign to one of these categories why are categories important well really just for the reporting at the end where it breaks things down per category so for argument's sake if you're renting five different uh types of machines uh, the, the report will then show which of those types are more likely to be uh, needed longer than you originally rented for that kind of thing so that's why it's maybe useful to categorize it but quite what you categorize it with is, is up to you so that's the first page the only really two tabs where you can input data then there's the archive and the two reports so the first one it's sort of the easy one is is a supplier list simply name the supplier you can put in a contact name, uh, so if the person that you would normally talk to, maybe a landline, a mobile number, an email address. Those are just for your records. They're not going anywhere. It's not really doing anything other than just being here available for you so that you can see who it is that you talk to. The important thing is to put in a supplier name and a unique supplier name. Then what will happen is the green headed columns, so the green headed columns are, all, are usually um, formulated cells, the red ones are the ones you fill in. So what will happen is it'll count how many you actually have currently listed on the on the rented items. It'll also count what the initial plan was. So what was the initial cost that you planned um, for for each of those suppliers? What is the actual or budget? Now the actual budget, uh, oops, sorry, budget or actual the budget is what you currently due to pay for it based on extensions that you may have had as far as rentals are concerned and then or if you've returned it then it then it uses the actual figure and then what is the difference so this difference actually shows how much are you over budget initial budget being the initial plan how much are you over budget for if with each of these suppliers that's what that's going and it'll keep a running total so this will update as you update the other list so this list is fairly static all you do is add a new supplier and when you get a new supplier and you can come here to see these figures as and when you need to this is the page where all the data entry takes place so this is where you track all the items so let's just go through one column at a time first of all hide item you can type in the name of whatever this item is or whatever it is you have you've got a code or whatever it is that you do just something to identify the item that you've hired you can then select the categories and the categories remember are the ones we did on the setup <clears throat> so however you want to categorize it you can then select hired from and you can select one of the suppliers. If the supplier is not on the list, add them on here, and then they will re reappear. You can then sort A to Z. You can click on here to sort A, uh, A to Z. So you can put them in alphabetical order. Select the next hired from. Then you put a start date and an original planned return date. <clears throat> so all of this from here to here is a, is a setup at the beginning. So what you re what it's asking you is 
when did you initially plan to rent this now sometimes a rental item they could say to you for example you pay a hundred pounds for the week whether you have it for one day or whether you have it for seven days makes no difference you pay a fixed fee or some of the other ones could be a uh, this is the price it doesn't matter how many days you take it but this is the period that you got it for however it works out I've tried to cover all the eventuality so I'll show you how it works if you put in the initial start date basically when you're going to go pick this item up and when you due to return it so this is the initial loan period because uh, normally you would say okay I, w I want it for a week or whatever the case might be or even if you don't necessarily have a set time put down what you think that ought to be then you can put here your cost for your item so this this section here these three three uh, columns here are to do with this initial start date so is it a fixed rate in which case just fill in the fixed rate and that's done you can see that I put in 100 pounds that's 100 pounds on the 7th to the 11th of December no questions asked it doesn't matter how much per day they're charging 100 pounds for that for that period here what this one does is uh, actually that one's wrong that shouldn't be 30 there that should be 30 over here this one is saying for example cost per 20 uh, 20 pounds for one day 80 pounds for seven days 10 pounds for one day so on and so forth so if it's 10 pounds a day 10 pounds one day if it's 80 pounds a week 80 pounds for seven days you can put in whatever combination you want there to to show how much this is actually charging then what you do is what is the cost for extensions so the cost for extension doesn't have a fixed price because there's no fixed date what the cost for extension does is goes if you keep it three days overdue for example what are you going to pay are you paying another 100 pounds per week are you paying uh, 25 pounds a day whatever the case may be so then you can come in and put what your cost for extension is it may well be the same as the initial but i put them down twice just in case it wasn't maybe you got a cheaper deal for the first week and then it cost you more or more expensive and cost you less however so you can be put in extension so what you would you would do is you would fill up to that point when you add a new item on i would imagine you put all this information in all that's left to do now is to put in an extended date or the actual date when you return an item so let's just say for example here because i i've put well, first of all this will change color when i get to the time so you can see here i'm in extended time for these three here i'm in the initial time and there i've returned the item so what happens if we're now on the 10th of December, so this is the uh, 11th is something due. Now I've got the day's warning set at zero, so this will only flag up on the day when it's due to return. If you say, well, hold on, that's not enough time, I want to know two days before, whatever, you can put it in here. So if I put two days before, all of a sudden there it says action due on these three items. So why is the action due on this item? Well, because we're now on Thursday, the 10th of December, but this is saying that tomorrow we're going to need an extension because this one needs to go back now you may look at this and go that's fine because we're going to return it tomorrow in which case you can leave it but then like these ones for example where it says Friday the 11th this is saying we need a return date to require uh, uh, an extended sorry ex extended return date um, uh, required because we need an extension on this particular rental so then if, if I come in here and go well, yes actually that's right I am going to want this for longer but I'm going to want it until the 15th of December for example then as you put that in it disappears because it now knows that all right now it's recalculated and gone okay now we're going to recalculate using these values to see what you would be paying until the 15th of december so they're still in the initial time but you've already updated the return date to beyond uh, what that initial contract period was so that's how it works and it's a live document so in the sense that every day you come in these could change the statuses could change as you reach these days um, but those will update as you go along the only thing that would change is if you get to the end of this one so for example Friday the 11th of December this needs to go back tomorrow if I still need it longer I'll simply extend that period and go actually I'm going to return it on the 15th of December so then it gives me some more time but obviously that's going to take into consideration the the costs as well and show you these end formulas here are all calculated so it'll show you what was originally planned to spend what your current um, uh, uh, planned is so in other words compared to these return dates what you've actually spent to date i up to this day that we're currently in and then when you return an item it fills in the the actual um, uh, figure 
it shows you the actual figure that you got there and then your your budget uh, what you are over budget so that automatically calculates but what we've got uh, yeah so all you need to do is fill in the return date once it's returned once it's returned that items actually returned and it's now done and dusted nothing else happens to it it's gone back so what are the other the other pages? Well, your dashboard one is it says one action due, and the reason why there's one action due is because this one's due, and we haven't done anything with it yet. So it'll it'll show up as an action due. If we were to take that back to the 15th of December, and we go to a dashboard, that disappears and says no urgent warnings. So these are warnings that'll show you show up from your from your rented items page. Then it shows how many items are currently in initial time, how many are in extended time, and how many have been returned. And it gives you a breakdown of the original value, current value, based on the items that fall into each of these three categories. This over here is a total for all items, what you are over budget. This doesn't necessarily add up these three because it also takes ones that are um, currently listed as warnings as well into account. So it may not necessarily tally up, but most of the time they should. Uh, so that's just a dashboard page which you can visit at any stage it's automatically calculated so it updates as these these items update it's just an overview so you can see where you are and if there's anything urgent that needs your attention the other one is a report so this is this is also updated but what it also does is it also gives you some kind of retrospective type of look so you can see all the different statuses incomplete action due and so on how many are there and all the values for the current plan to date actual budget and then as a percentage um, if you scroll down you can see your categories how many of each you've got what was your initial budget and over budget so you can see which of these ones uh, uh, so this was a count the number of the number of um, uh, items so there's two each so each of them have got an equal representation but here you can see that was the initial budget of all the categories and this was the actual uh, what we've gone over budget so you can look at that and go hang on the, the red one here, category one, is quite a small actual initial budget, but it's taking up a lot more of this graph, and that to me would be a red flag, and I would then start asking questions as to why uh, this category one, why we have, why do we have such a low budget for it, and we're actually spending a lot, of, uh, going a lot over budget. Um, if you scroll down at the bottom, you've got some of these figures as well, so you can see per category what was the average initial and over budget for your current values. Uh, what are the ones where that you've returned um, and then the ones in the archive I'll get to the archive in a second show you the values here so you can see what your initial value was compared to your budget and it shows as a percentage so for argument's sake here category one the ones that we've currently got on this list that haven't been returned yet we have actually gone 941 percent over budget which is huge and we really should be looking at that figuring out what's going on so the archive tab the archive tab is simply because if you're going to have a whole of these rented and you keep adding onto these eventually you're going to have a whole bunch of returned items that you don't necessarily need on this list now keep in mind when you do move them from this list onto the archive list when you go to things like the dashboard and reporting they won't be on this reporting and they won't be here anymore as final values they would now move across to the um, based on the archive results the, the value so you've just got to keep in mind in fact here you can select which lists do you want to uh, include in these figures you can include either the um, rental items only i.e. these ones over here or you can include the archive items only i.e. this tab over here or you can include both lists so you can select which one of what you want to appear in in these graphs but just bear in mind obviously the reporting may change when you move them across but let's just say you want to remove these ones across here if you now come and select from there across to right the way across even the green ones all the way to the end there if you right click copy and you go to your archive you select here right click paste values so now you've pasted those into this other spreadsheet into the archive and you can come back here now you've got to redo it again because now you don't want to do the, the green one for the second one if you go to here right click clear contents now you've removed all the ones that have been returned so you can keep keep this list as lean as possible as I said if you want to keep them on the report keep them for a short while but when they get much older what you can do is you can come and you can just sort by return date to bring all the old ones at the top clear those ones and then resort alphabetically or 
or by start date or however you want to do it. But that once they've been moved across the archive, what it means is that the spreadsheet's not doing as many formulas trying to keep track of this and you don't have this list building up and building up. And now you'll see on the report, now there's stuff in, in the archive and there's nothing completed on the main list. So yeah, I hope that that's helpful. Some of these this reporting and the dashboard you, you may not necessarily need, but yeah, I, I think if you if you are um, uh, having to manage a lot of rented items, I think this could this could really help you, and I hope that it does. So if this is for you, I wish you all the best. Um, if this spreadsheet, uh, if this gives you some ideas as to what you'd like to do, but this one doesn't quite cover your your situation, get in touch. I'm sure we can chat about making a a customized one. Um, but if this one works for you, then uh, yeah, I really do wish you all the best of your business. Thank you very much, and goodbye.